Hello once again, one and all, and welcome to the place of learning. Here at Guru Grit, the pursuit of knowledge trumps everything. So let's get into today's topic that I'm so eager to discuss with all of you. And it is going to be about ethics and ethos and why I find it to be so important. And I just sort of happened to come upon the answer in the least likely place that I would expect. And just like all good things in life, there's no planning involved. It simply just happens to you. So I was asking a question and it was evoked by my vibration in some unlikely way, but it doesn't really matter. The how is never our business. I'm just glad that we're all here. So today's subject is going to be about ethos and this type of work. Now, as we know, astrology is not a regulated profession. So we as astrologers must take it upon ourselves to do what is right. So what is it that is right? Simply to do unto others as you would have done unto you. Now, I keep saying the answer I happened upon in the strangest way, and this is true. As promised in the recent months, I'm going to be selling off my personal book stash that I've been accumulating since high school up until very recently. Some of these books I bought from used bookstores as early as, I don't even know, 2000 and before 2005 actually. And some recently, some have been thrifted, some I found, some I had to buy online, some I had to fight over to get, but I have amassed dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens, but I mean, very, very spiritual, very much in keeping with this channel. So I'm going to keep all the books I post on my Etsy, some already up, very, very narrow. Okay, so everything to do with psychic training, ESP, remote seduction, um, Akashic records, and so forth, and healing, which is, I think, the most important thing, you know, the body is the temple, this is actually to be taken very literally, if you treat your body well, you become much more in tune with the energy centers of it. So speaking of which, I was thumbing through Anne Wigmore's book, who wrote an incredible book called Be Your Own Doctor, a Positive Guide to Natural Living. And she has a section on astrology, just a couple of pages. And it just got me thinking, you know, I always say a tool is useless if you don't use it. And people are like, oh, but astrology is nonsense. Can you prove it? Can you prove it? It's like, well, yeah, but if you're not willing, like I can work with, you know, a, a cast iron skillet all day long and you can watch me all day long. You are no closer to being a decent cook for having watched me. You have to get in the kitchen, okay? You have to feel the heat. So here, I'll just read to you a little bit about uh, what I found interesting, and then I'll just make some commentary. Astrology is an instrument of knowledge, the algebra of life. Like mathematics, astrology has no meaning in and of itself. The symbols of the different planets and signs, just like the numbers in math, have no significance unless related to the whole, to the individual, and group context of our lives. Working practically with these symbols can give us invaluable information. Okay, excellent. She mentions, you know, mental, spiritual makeup, all these important things. It emphasizes the timely importance of these choices by showing, by showing us that these crossroads do not happen every day. So the first point I would like to make when it comes to speaking about my work is something I have said for many years and I'll continue to say until I take my last breath. And this is the thing. Anything is possible. I will reiterate, anything is possible. When you use astrology, you narrow down windows of time and best steps. Let's assume this year, it's your birthday today. I'm recording this on the... 11th of February, 3.06 p.m. And you want to get married, you want to open a business and you'd like to move abroad. And you say to me, Monica, what should I do with my life? Here's what I want to do with my life. And I say to you, focus on the move, buy a house, move abroad. That is what's in store for you. Now, there's nothing stopping you from getting married and opening a business, but if you focus your energy on moving abroad, the other things in your life will follow suit because you're doing the thing that's most likely to be done anyways. So basically, anything is possible, comma, it becomes more probable when you use timing, when you understand the nuance 
and the formulas, let's say, the formulas, the magic of the universe. It's, it's so blaringly obvious sometimes. I find it so funny that people think it's silly. But if you use it, you know, you'll know there's a time to reap, a time to sow, a time to rest, a time to work, and so forth. Next. Let's get into... This language of the stars takes a while to sink into the subconscious, which is where it has to be in order to strengthen our intuition. To gain as much benefit as possible takes many hours of study and meditation and a lot of time for the newly learned language and knowledge to sink in. It is wise to remember that anything negative we might instill or stir up in other people when reading their charts, we are responsible for karmically. Absolutely. Every time an astrologer opens up a chart, they create new karmas. So every time I open a chart to read, effectively, I lessen some of my own life force energy. It flows out from me and into another. That is serious business. And karma is, a, as Dolores Cannon says, karma is a sticky substance. And I agree, karma sticks to you. It's very, very hard to get off. All right, you need like some baking soda paste to rinse that salve from your soul. Therefore, please do unto others as you would have done unto you. This brings me to my second point and ethos, which is I hear every day since going online with this work, though I have to admit, I lived a much more peaceful life before I decided to, <laughs> to, to put myself out there. I have no regrets, but please understand. Someone says, I'm so scared. I have Saturn in the seventh house. And I'll say, okay, why are you scared? Because my logic, and I'm not that romantic. I'm sentimental and sensitive, but I'm not a very romantic person. And my immediate logic is, he has to go somewhere. So anywhere you would have Saturn, you would express fear. But if you really think about it, he has to fall somewhere. So what's there to be afraid of? It's inevitable. Uh, the other thing is Saturn does best in the seventh house. So I think, what are you talking about? And they'll say, I heard it means you'll never get married. Which, of course, my next question, which I've stopped asking because my hair will fall out, is where did you hear that? And they will say, TikTok. And I want to fall into a hole into the ground. And I think, what does that even mean? What does that really mean? Denial is never seen from just one little thing. You have to see the whole chart, okay? They're general indicators, but one thing is not going to determine everything. So if you decide to spread fear-based information, I'm not saying it's untrue sometimes, but the tone in which you do it in is nasty and it's done to get clicks and views and attention. You're losing more than you're actually putting out. You don't understand how that will boomerang. And again, I'm not saying this to fear monger or any such thing. The point of Guru Grit is to inform. My ultimate aim and the highest accolade I could ever achieve is for someone to say, you've made me my own astrologer. I don't need you anymore. That's the greatest thing. You should learn to help yourself. But if people are putting out half truths and I see it every day, just to catch your interest or make you dependent on them, they don't understand fully that their ego is still too strong and they're not ready to live a life of service this is as much a life of service as someone in the psychiatric industry or social work you're giving of yourself so much physically mentally and energetically it is so draining and that's what it's meant to be it's not glamorous and it's not glorified in fact karmically an astrologer is never meant to prosper through astrology there are many famous renowned wealthy astrologers they are not rich because of their readings they're rich because of their savvy. They hold seminars or do speaking tours or something like that. But when it comes to their actual bread and butter, when they're in the trenches doing readings, that they do not make very much money on to live full time. Though it might make up the bulk of their income, ultimately it's not supposed to make you, you know, have some crazy <laughs> jet set first class lifestyle because it's very humbling work. And you do the best work when you've done the work yourself, taken your own advice and swallowed oh so many bitter pills, which brings us to this next section. We cannot be too careful when dealing with people's lives. There are too many people who read one book and set themselves up as astrologers with little knowledge of the subject. Astrology is something to be taken seriously, just as psychology or psychotherapy. 
Many young astrologers will fall by the wayside when they are put into situations where they must follow their own advice, be proof of their teachings by their own life example. Just as I said, you must sort of die to your old self to do the best work that you can do. And another thing when it comes to putting work out there that there's nothing wrong in learning and doing it as you go along, but state that very clearly because it's easy to misinterpret and I have also noticed that people who use my work and copy my videos don't do it in the correct manner. They don't actually speak to me and understand what they're saying and they spread misinformation which they don't understand is really damaging. I would much rather someone come to me sincerely and simply ask the question. I'm happy. I share information for free all day every day of my life. It's not an issue. But you have to understand where you stand in this uh, cosmic stew. We're all in this giant pot and we're all connected. And if you're going to stir it, you want to make sure you're doing it the right way. Okay, you don't want anything sticking to the bottom and burning and stinking up the soup. So this is the beautiful part that she mentions. Remember, astrology is merely a way of tuning in and coming out of our separate spokes into the great wheel of life and uniting with our brothers and sisters with the awe and love, which is our birthright. All our differences are merely different roads traveling to and from the center. Astrology is a way of seeing that we are all the same, of learning about individual selves and taking care of business so that we can receive God's love. It is a way of finding all of life within us. It is a very effective tool in healing as the energies of the planets are tied up with the glands and circulation. So, of course, I mention this extensively in the Sex and the Spiritual Path books by Edgar Cayce. Um, sorry, book, the series that I've done on Edgar Cayce. I still have one left, but he mentions all of that. So, very interestingly, that is my ethos, is to do unto others as you would have done unto you. Understand when you read a chart for a person, you are submitting to a really powerful force you're meditating you're asking for guidance and even if that person like now that i'm online it really surprises me how i've never seen the face of my clients i've never heard their voice i'm a sound person so hearing people's voices really helps me connect and tap into their energy but without that without a full name without a face, without even knowing what they want. Most of the people who make a purchase don't ask a question. They just give me their birthday and they're like, go, <laughs> go work. And I'm like, okay. You know, it's interesting how with some meditation and intuitive discipline, you can start to pick things up in the chart you wouldn't recognize before. So please do not underestimate this amazing life science. And just remember, like I said, a tool is useless if you don't use it. So the harder you work, the more you practice, the more you study, the more easier things will be able to come to you. And I can honestly say it is my good pleasure. I always say it is my good pleasure to be your astrologer because with every chart I cast, I'm a little bit better than I was for the chart that I did before. So always do right. Understand karma. It will follow you, uh, not in a fear mongering sense, but it will reflect to you all the doings of this life and understand that astrology is so powerful and so beautiful and it is a language it is absolutely a language and if you can read the symbols if you can be technically a strong astrologer you can make calculations you can understand you can truly help people you can truly help people and i hope it is your intention to help them now i want to finish this off with a quote by Edgar Casey, and it is one of the last things he ever spoke before he passed away and he was such a good prophet in fact he predicted his own demise he knew when he was going to die and he called everyone to come say bye to him and some of the last words he spoke was mind is the builder knowledge not lived becomes sin so learn something if you've received advice from your neighborhood astrologer or your personal astrologer whoever it is that you trust whoever it is that you trust with your chart and the sacred information apply the wisdom apply their guidance if they say go you go if they say don't then don't you have to trust yourself of course and trust it in your gut that it's the right thing to do but as i said earlier anything is possible but with astrology it's much more probable now if you have that knowledge apply the knowledge 
So thank you so much for listening. I wish you all a wonderful weekend. And I decided to make this on a Friday because it's ruled by Venus. If you've watched my Planetary Power series, you would know Venus rules Fridays and Venus is the planet of prophecy. So we're speaking about prophets and things. So thank you so much for being here. I'll keep posting some more videos about these books that have eaten up so much of my time lately and I've loved every second of it. If you'd like to have a look at what I have on offer right now, I've posted some today on Etsy. I have much, much more to come. So fellow conspiracy theorists, unite. There's more, there's more on the way. If you have any more questions as always, please let me know. I wish you a beautiful weekend. I love you all. Bye-bye for now.